<laughs> so hi everyone, this is Emily at Quasi. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar today. We wanted to give the opportunity to introduce the Summer Institute participants to each other and to the kind of research community surrounding the Summer Institute. Um, so in just a moment, I'm going to turn things over to David Mainman, who is at the University of Texas at Austin and the technical director of the Summer Institute this year. Uh, so just another reminder, we do want people to be able to introduce themselves over the phone, but there is quite a bit of background noise that I'm hearing coming through. So please mute your phone lines um, if you have not done so already. Uh, if it doesn't work out and there's a lot of noise coming over, we may just need to mute everyone's line. But hopefully we don't need to do that. It sounds a little more quiet right now, which is good. So David, if you're ready, I'll, I'll bring up your slides and we can go ahead and get started. Okay, thank you so much, Emily. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. And, and I'm in the National Water Center at this moment uh, presenting this webinar. And so I feel like almost the Summer Institute is, is, has already begun even though we haven't all gathered here yet. Uh, it's just so exciting to think that we're going to have 34 students uh, with 30 advisors and 22 universities uh, involved with the program this year. And there's a great deal of excitement here in Tuscaloosa. The National Water Model is currently going through a one-month testing phase where they're producing data but not yet uh, letting it out. Uh, there's a great sense of expectation that this is the birth of something completely new and sort of I was here to hear your morning cry or something like that. It's that kind of a, a birth moment that's happening here. Uh, there's also a national uh, called a conversation about the National Water Model that's happening right at this moment here at the National Water Center that's been convened by the administrator of NOAA, Kathy Sullivan, who's also here. And so there's a lot of constituents uh, from all over the country who are here and sharing their ideas about how the National Water Model could grow in the future and help them to do what they're doing better. So there's really a sense of a whole new frontier that's opening up here, and this is just sort of the birth moment of it right at this, uh, right at this moment, actually. So this is an exciting uh, time to be doing this uh, Summer Institute. So I sent out a message earlier and said that uh, I would like the participants, uh, if they're on the call, to introduce themselves and the advisors also. Uh, and so I want to start uh, just going through that now and ask, uh, I mean, and I'm going to apologize because I know I'll mess up quite a few of your names, and please correct me if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Uh, or tell me if I've got it spelled wrong, um, and to ask the students and the advisors to say a few words about themselves. So let's start with Oregon State University and Amir Jabahiri <coughs> and Magna Baba Sabin. Uh, are there of you on the line? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir Jabahiri. I'm a PhD student at uh, Oregon State University. Uh, and uh, my research is about data assimilation in uh, water quality models. Hi, my name is Meghna Babur Stevens, and I'm Amir's advisor here at Oregon State, and I mostly work in the area of hydroinformatics and decision support and decision making in data assimilation work. Well, thank you so much, and we're really looking forward to the contribution from Oregon State University because a wonderful water resources program there. Uh, yes. Bing Kling Lu, <laughs> Yong Zhang from the University of Alabama. Are either of them on the call? Okay, let's move on to Brenda Bazan and Jude Benavides from UT Rio Grande Valley. Oops. Hi, David. Um, I'm Brenda, an undergrad student from UT Rio Grande Valley. I'm focusing on hydrology and flood issues in the lower Rio Grande Valley. And hi, everyone. This is Jude Benavides. I'm a professor of hydrology and environmental sciences at UTRGV. Uh, we're actually here at a conference here at South Padre Island in South Texas where uh, David, where I think uh, Tim Whitaker is actually talking about the National Water Model tomorrow morning as part of the uh, Valleywide Integrated Monitoring and Forecasting for Flood Response and Economic Development uh, part of the conference. So uh, we're looking forward to participating and getting to meet folks uh, in the next few weeks. Okay, thanks so much, Jude. Uh, Christopher Zaza and Jamie Dyer from Mississippi State University. Um, Chris told me that he's got innumerable problems moving his fiance to Tennessee or something like that. <laughs> and he asked me to convey to you that his work is concerned with unmanned aerial vehicles uh, and being able to do measurements from UAVs and, and in particular looking at uh, the collecting data on the lower Pearl River estuary and trying to understand uh, how that estuary is changing and he's hoping that the 
national water model and the flows in the national water model can help them with those interpretations. Um, I don't know if uh, if Chris's advisor, Jamie Dyer, is on the phone. Okay, let's move on then. Dawn Butler and Hatim Sharif from UT San Antonio. Hatim and Dawn, are you on the line? Okay, let's move on to Danuki Munasinga and Sagi Cohen from the University of Alabama. Sagi on the line? Danuki? Okay, let's move on. Dong Mai Feng and Edward Bailey from Northeastern University. I saw Dong Mai's name in the list here, so I know he's on the uh, on the uh, web link and on the web link. Okay, let's move on then. Uh, Emily Poston and Paula Pasalaka <coughs> from UT Austin. UT stands for University of Texas. If you about that, not the University of Tennessee. Emily, I saw you on the list. Hello. Hi, yes, I'm here. Um, my name is Emily, and I'm a master's student studying water resources engineering at the University of Texas. Um, I'm advised by Dr. Yeah. Paula Pasolacqua, and um, my research is focusing on LIDAR analysis and how data at different resolutions affects hydrologic modeling. Thank you, Emily. Uh, James Cole and Jin Gong Lee from the University of Kansas. Uh, 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 yeah, my name is Jim Cole. Uh, I do uh, surface water hydrology. Uh, I'm a new patient, and uh, I focus on snow dominated waters and Google Earth. Well, this is Jin Gong Lee. This is Jin Gong Lee, and. Uh, I'm the advisor of Jim Call. Jim uh, is going to do a water balance model for snow dominated watershed, mountain watershed, and uh, we're trying to scale uh, those watershed models to a global scale using Google's engine. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, so, uh, whoopsie. Uh, <coughs> the next person is uh, Jay Queen Zhang and Nick Fang from UT Arlington. Uh, hi, David. Hi. Hi, um, my name is <coughs> Jackie and I'm from UT Arlington. My research experience includes evaluating infiltration methods and flood risk for the Fort Worth floodway along the Opportunity River. Okay, wonderful. Um, and we have Krishna Gadiraju and Ranga Bhavai from North Carolina State University. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, hopefully you're able to hear this. Um, I'm Krishna from uh, North Carolina State University. Uh, I, my, my research is on scalable uh, machine learning techniques. Um, I work, uh, I'm from the computer science background, so, um, and uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, work on forecasting using uh, different machine learning techniques like Gaussian process learning. Wonderful. Uh, next, we have Hyun Min Kim, and his advisor is Ben Hodges from UT Austin. Are, the, are there of them on the phone? Okay, then let's move on. Uh, we have King Lee, uh, who's advisor of Zhong Liang Yang at UT Austin. I, I saw Ling Cheng on the on the line. Can you say something, Ling Cheng? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello? we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. My name is Ling Chen Li, the first year PhD student from the UT Austin. My supervisor is Zhong Liang Yang, one of the major development of the analysis model. Low IMP, which is used in the national water model. My current project is to use high resolution soil texture data set in the low IMP and to improve the soil moisture and the rough simulation, I think which can be a benefit to our summer project. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you so much. And lastly on this page, Mark Hageman and Myung Hyung Park from University of Massachusetts at Amherst. 
Hi, this is Mark. Um, so I'm a PhD student here at UMass. Um, my research focuses on water quality modeling uh, in the context of water supply reservoirs. I do a lot of work with uh, load estimation and concentration estimation in uh, rivers uh, throughout the Northeast, and I've focused a lot on extreme events, uh, hurricane and tropical storm impacts on water quality. Yeah, so this is one of the things I think that the National Water Model is going to potentially be really informative for. And in fact, there are going to be three panels this afternoon here in Tuscaloosa, one on drought, one on flood, and one on water quality. And when we think about load estimation, a lot of load gets transported in pulse events. And that having continuous flow simulation underneath that, I think, is going to really help with uh, being able to do load estimation in episodic uh, flow systems. So let's move on to the next page this is here. Also, uh, Gomez, hello. I'm sorry. Hello. Um, this is also Bihyun Park, the advisor of Mark Hegeman. Oh, I, I apologize. Please continue. Yeah, so <laughs> I also work with Mark, and then we have, been, uh, we have been working on the surface water quality and then also working on the watershed input and stormwater um, effect on the surface water quality. Sorry for Thank my voice. So Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Um, and there's uh, Marcelo Simmons Valenzuela is at UMass Amherst now. I think he was very much involved in the Summer Institute last year. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go on to Michael Gomez and Alfonso Mejia from Penn State. Either of them on the phone? Alfonso? Michael? Okay, let's continue on with Mike Johnson and Keith Clark from UC Santa Barbara. Keith told me he's on the road somewhere, but uh, Mike will be representing the program. Yeah, um, hi, so I'm Mike Johnson I'm from UCSB, and uh, most of my work, I'm a first year master's student, has been about collecting data um, about California's integrated water system and how it can be used to kind of preemptively look at droughts and water security issues here. Yeah, so one of the things that's really encouraging to me this year is the strong support uh, and engagement of the GIS community. So. Keith Clark is the former chairman of the Mapping Sciences Committee of the National Academy of Sciences, and I'm the current chairman, so I took over for him. So we really want to welcome the, our GIS uh, colleagues uh, uh, to the National Water Center, and the GIS uh, type of analysis is going to play a really big impact as the sort of you try to understand the effects of water on things. Uh, the GIS, I think, is going to play a very strong role in it. So thank you for joining us for the Summer Institute, Mike. Yeah, I'm pleased to be. I beg pardon? Oh, I said I'm pleased to be here. Yeah. Great. We'll look forward to it. Um, then there's Mohammed Nabatian and DJ Sal from UT Arlington. Uh, they sent me a message that they can't join the call, but they do very high fidelity radar measurement in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And so they've done detailed uh, flow modeling in the interior of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. I think that's a key thing that they do it there in their research program. Uh, there's Paul Royce. Are you there, Paul? Hi, yes. Uh, I'm working, I'm a first year's master's student at UT Austin, and I'm working primarily on improving an, an existing uh, HydroShare web app developed by a previous PhD student, and it's used for viewing and, and downloading hydrologic data. And I'm also working a little bit as well on uh, flood emergency response and producing these maps that I believe Dr. Maven has already spoken about in, in these meetings before. Yes, so thank you, Paul. And uh, Paul's also working uh, some with the TESA system uh, that has been developed by Brigham Young University. And when I get to the student assistance, there's a couple coming from Brigham Young University. And this is a very interesting system that's being developed at BYU and enables us to reach into the national water model results and to extract pieces of them for uh, examination. Because as you can imagine, it's just a huge model. And so uh, Paul's experience with doing the same kind of thing with NASA information is going to be very helpful, I think. So then we have Richard Henry Garth and Brian Chastain from UT Dallas. Either of them on the phone? Uh, OK, so let's move on. Uh, we have Ryan Patrick McGee and Punit Srivastava from Auburn University. Hello, everybody. I'm Ryan. I'm a second year master's student, and I'm working on uh, looking at observed and predicted changes in rainfall intensity and the impact on soil loss. Okay. 
Well, I, I hope you'll be okay when you come here, uh, Brian. I've heard that you've got to either be from Auburn or from the University of Alabama if you live here in Alabama. It's kind of one of those binary choices. So That's absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sanjeev Sharma and Alfonso Mahir from Penn State University. Sanjeev, Alfonso. Okay, let's move on. Saeed Hassan Omramian. Uh, and Hatim Sharif from UT San Antonio. Either of them on the phone? Okay, let's move on. Saeed uh, Mohammed Hossein Hosseini and Virginia Smith from Villanova. Uh, hello, can you hear me, Dave? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so this is Hossein. I graduated recently from University of Houston, and I'm joining for PhD at Villanova University working with uh, Virgin, Dr. Virginia Smith. Uh, the research that I was involved uh, when I was a master's student, uh, basically I was responsible for quantification of the sediment transport in some major rivers in the Texas. So I worked with Trinity and you know Brazos rivers to quantify the sediment transport. And the goal finally was to calculate the effective discharge for these rivers that uh, somehow is related to morphology of the rivers. So I think the uh, sediment transport, I can say, was like the main major of, the, uh, of my thesis and my research. And that's very helpful because uh, one of the things that we're really going to emphasize here in the Summer Institute is very detailed stream hydraulics at local locations. So this is not all just about doing things across the nation. There's also going to be um, the depth and velocity measurement equipment installed and detailed field work done for a couple of local locations, and we hope that that's going to lead to a better understanding of how to do shear forces and so on that are involved with sediment transport. So thank you for that. And uh, Virginia Smith was a former student of mine, actually, at the University of Texas many years ago. So, well, some years ago. And <laughs> I'm, I'm here also. Hi. Hey, hey Virginia. <laughs> Great to be here, and I'm, I'm so excited uh, about this program this summer. Um, and also to have Hussein to work with Hussein in the coming year. So uh, what what I do here at Villanova is looking at fluvial geomorphology and the hydrology and sediment dyna transport dynamics, um, particularly related looking at that in relation to urban impacts, reservoirs, and land use changes, and how that affects how much sediment is making its way down to the coast and to wetlands. So um, I think this will be a, a really great summer for that. Wonderful. And you, are you still a marathon runner, Virginia? I am still running marathons. It's been a few years, but hopefully in the next year or two I'll get the Philadelphia Marathon under my belt. Yes, yeah, so Virginia is one of these very persistent people who that she just you don't just notice her coming and then just well, she goes by. Yeah, that's what the other runners told me. She <laughs> runs marathons. <laughs> thank you, Virginia. And thank uh, you. Shahab, yeah, Shahab Afsari and Balash Fekete from City University of New York. Okay, this is Balaj. I really am puzzled where Shahab is because he was super excited yesterday about this telecon and he said he's going to join me here. I'm here. Office. Oh, you are there. Okay. Yeah. And go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, hi everyone. This is Shahab Akshari. I'm a PhD student at Civil Engineering Department, Water Resources Program at City University of New York uh, City College. So. Um, we are saying that the quantitative and qualitative assessments of river flow and floodplain dynamics require sufficient knowledge of the hydraulics and geophysical variables, and we are investigating the advantage of application of average condition rather than knowing detailed flow and hydraulic information in reducing the need for labor-intensive detailed measurement and improving the flow routing schemes and river network modeling. And the adstation hydraulic geometry or simply uh, AST relation being at the parallel relation of the channel hydraulics versus discharge are among the latest uh, average conditions uh, since the uh, 50s. And we are developing the AST relations for 4289 USGS uh, monitoring uh, stations. But uh, we are arguing about the use of the satellite imagery for uh, improving the reliability and the uh, also, uh, functionality of the AST relation in terms of the average, uh, reach average conditions. And uh, we can uh, extend this work to the floodplain also to explore the, uh, need, uh, the, uh, the reduced need of the uh, detailed information about the geometry of the floodplain that we are going to use in, 
floodway analysis. Well, that's wonderful. That's very, extremely relevant to what we're trying to do with the flood inundation mapping and hydraulics. Uh, Balash, do you want to say a few words about No, uh, after Shahab's lengthy introduction, no. So, I mean, uh, I'm well, coming from Global Hydrological Balash. Balash is a friend from way back. Uh, Balash has worked on wonderful studies at the global scale and yeah. global water balance and global runoff and so on. Um, so we really appreciate the contribution that you've made in that area too, Balash. <coughs> yeah, and we are super this excited about this. Yeah, City University of New York uh, a couple of years ago. It's a wonderful place and uh, top end of Manhattan. So. Uh, Whitney Elizabeth Houston and Tanvia Islam from Jacksonville State University here in the great state of Alabama. Hi, um, it's Henson. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, yes, my name is Whitney Henson. Um, my advisor is Dr. Islam from JSU. Um, I work mostly with volunteer organizations here in uh, Alabama. We study water uh, quality monitoring, including water chemistry monitoring and bacteriological monitoring. Um, I'm actually a trainer for Alabama Water Watch. Um, we teach citizens um, to use standardized equipment and techniques to gather credible water data um, using uh, quality assurance protocols. Um, I'm also a volunteer at the local emergency management agency. That's what I'm getting my master's degree in, is in emergency management. Um, I uh, create flood emergency response maps using uh, GIS technology. Wow, that's great. That's exactly what we're going to be doing as one of the themes here at the Summer Institute, Whitney. So uh, maybe you can show you us do. how to do it. That would be right. wonderful. Um, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Tanvir uh, Islam. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in the Emergency Management Program. And my re main research interests include uh, hazard mitigation and vulnerability assessment, uh, mainly for the weather-related hazard. Uh, such as hurricane, uh, tornadoes, and flooding. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's certainly right on target for what we're doing in the Summer Institute. Uh, Jing Jing, is he on the phone? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Jing. OK. Hello, everyone. This is Shane from UT Austin. I'm a PhD student working with Dr. Mittman and Dr. Kosovoka, and mainly working on flood inundation mapping and terrain data analysis. Supposedly, I'm the only student will participate in NAFI twice, so that's a unique experience. <laughs> yes, and Jing's done wonderful work on river channel hydraulics and things like that that you'll see more about when you get here. Uh, Ying Ting Lao and Mei Wan from UT Dallas. Okay, this is Mei Wan. Um, I don't know whether Yan Ting is here. She just she was taking a qualifying exam today. So she might join us a little bit late. Uh, we are GIS researchers, so we use a lot of geospatial information technologies and uh, thinking to look at environmental informatics. And in this particular project, we are interested in looking at flood inundation mapping and modeling, applying spatial modeling and spatial statistics in combination of historical data and real-time data. That's a wonderful uh, contribution, May. And one of the things that I've listened as I've been here the last two days, we had a preparatory meeting um, that was dealing with the national water model itself. And this, really, this is, model is just getting going. So they've got a very primitive form of adjustment of the flows to um, measurements, which is just nudging. In other words, if the forecast is different than the current flow, they just change the forecast to the current flow. <laughs> it's not any more complicated than that. Now, obviously, we need a lot more careful thought given to forecast error and the spatial properties of forecast error and the capacity to be able to redistribute errors across the locations that drain to a particular gauge and not just nudging the gauge. That seems a pretty unknown kind of a subject right now, just listening to the discussion we had over the last couple of days. So I think your, your contribution to that will be really helpful. Wonderful. Happy to contribute. Yes. Next is Yu Feng Wang and Yi Lang Chen from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, Hello. Yes. Hi, um, this is actually Yifeng Chen. I'm a faculty at UH Manoa. I believe Yifeng is on the webinar, but uh, maybe not on the phone line. Um, 
Uh, Yusen is uh, just graduated from the meteorology department with Elon Chen, Dr. Elon Chen, and um, she will be joining my department to work on hydrology. Mm. Okay, well, I think it's wonderful to have a graduate from a meteorology since we're at a national yes, weather. Yes, I think that will be really valuable to have the meteorology background to, to contribute to understanding the hydrology. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things that's really a feature of what the National Water Model does is to link national weather forecasting with national water forecasting. Glad um, to have participated. There, yeah, well, thank you so much. Now, are there any students and faculty uh, that I uh, haven't had a chance to speak that I passed over? or? Okay, let's move on then to the... Uh, assistants and uh, advisors, uh, Adnan, uh, do you want to introduce uh, yourself? Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Adnan Rajib, I'm a PhD candidate uh, in civil engineering at the Purdue University. So last year I was a student working for NAFI as a resident scholar, so this time I will be uh, assisting the students along with Pei Ronglin and other student assistants and it will be a great experience I guess. So thank you. Uh, then have you got any guidance uh, for students coming to the institute about you know, what to bring and their computer and things like that? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, um, uh, you just need your personal computer, laptop, that's it. And, and uh, the major focus that you should be paying into the first, first one week where you need to be um, uh, very much interactive. The more you'll be interactive, the more you'll be into the program. and um, uh, we are. We all will be here, and also um, the dedicated advisors will be here this time. And I think this will be um, a big experience for all of them. Yes, I think the first week is really important for people to get to know one another. Um, we want to form research teams of three or four students to work on particular projects, and it takes time to get to know people enough to feel like comfortable to work with them. So as Adnan says, we want to have maximum opportunity for you to mix with one another, talk, and so on uh, during the first week so that by the time the beginning of the second week comes, you've got a feel for who you're going to be working with, which advisors you're going to be working with, and so on, and the sort of the general thrust of what you'll be doing when you're here. Uh, Pierong, uh, is Zinkatesh there, Adnan? Uh, no, he's probably not here in the call. Okay. Uh, Pierong Lin? Perong, are you on the phone? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Perong Ling, and I'm uh, currently a PhD student at UT Austin. Um, well, my research focus is um, working on the um, Wharf Hydro and Rapid model, which is like uh, the core of the national water model. And I work on the development and evaluation of the stream flow outputs from the national water model. Also, for the past semester, I worked with Dr. Maidman on some of the flood inundation mapping issues and uh, accuracy evaluation. So um, I was also one of the students last year. And this year, I'll be assisting um, the students this year to form teams and about the in information you needed to sh uh, form teams, yeah. So thank you so much, Pirong. So Adnan and Pirong are going to be the student coordinators, and that means they're, since they were here last year, uh, they've been given this organizational responsibility this year to um, be able to uh, not necessarily do the research as much themselves, but help others to do the, the research that's going on. And Pirong spent two summers in Boulder with uh, David Gotchis and the NCAR working on WIRF Hydro, which is the framework that's used for the National Water Model. So she knows that really, really well. And we have that running at the Texas Advanced Computing Center in Austin, so that if there's things that people want to do with WIRF Hydro, the Pirong is an expert in that field. Uh, Ridwan Sadiq and Alfonso Mahir from Penn State. You there, Ridwan? Okay, they're going to be working primarily in the Pennsylvania area, on the Delaware River Basin, and in the city of Philadelphia. And so the intent is to be able to show uh, the application of the National Water Model in an urban uh, environment and also in a river basin environment. Uh, the Savannah Keene and Jim Nelson from BYU, either of those on the phone? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Savannah, I'm going to speak for Savannah. She had her tonsils out yesterday, so I don't know how much she can speak up. Not, not much. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, gosh, that sounds horrible. Jim. Savannah's uh, uh, in her master's program here at BYU in hydroinformatics and hydrologic sciences, and she's been helping us um, with the TEFIS and the applications, as you mentioned, David, for um, mining and exploring the, the water model data. And Christian can probably explain a little bit more, so I'll, I'll let him do the rest. But we're real excited to be involved again with the Summer Institute and how, how the national water models evolved in, in the short time period and looking forward to working with everybody. Thank you, Jim. Hi, uh, this is Christian. Uh, so I'm working on the Tethys project, too. Um, and what I'm doing right now is working on some apps uh, for getting data um, with USGS AHAPS and then uh, something called the IRODS Data Explorer. And it's pretty much just the data you were talking about, David. Um, and uh, it, we're just making it so it's easy to access for everyone. Um, but, yeah, so yeah, that's the, the about right now. Yeah, the contribution of the team at BYU uh, both last year and this year is on uh, data access so that we can take, you can say, I want to work on this region of the country or this basin or this area, and I can get the data from the National Water Model that pertains to my area. And first of all, that's a GIS representation of the area itself, and then it's the observational and the simulation results for that area. And that's what the, the BYU folks are really going to help uh, uh, do for us. So thank you so much to everyone at BYU who've worked in a fantastically hard on this. I know I've heard so many calls from Jim uh, talking about what you've been doing. We really appreciate your contribution. Uh, Chris Franklin and Brian Chastain from UT Dallas. On the phone. Hi, David. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Christopher Franklin, and I will be uh, one of the four assistant theme coordinators at the uh, upcoming Summer Institute. I'm a uh, doctoral candidate at the University of Texas at Dallas. In the, specifically in the geoinformation science program, and I have an interest in the area of flood inundation and the effect uh, on demography and emergency response. Uh, over the last three years, I worked on the successful completion of a fully automated, simplified dam breach inundation software system that we call ISIM here uh, for the Department of Homeland Security's Collin County Emergency Management Fusion Center. Uh, last year, I attended the first summer institute as a student, and earlier this year, I was asked to return to help students explore and develop their ideas and projects for the upcoming Summer Institute. I am looking forward to meeting all of you and helping in any way I can in Tuscaloosa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. We really appreciate it. Chris is a GIS expert, as he mentioned. OK, so is there any, are there any other participants on the phone who've, um, who would like to say something but haven't had the chance yet? Emily, are there any thoughts that you have that you'd like to convey to the students or the advisors at this time? Um, no, I, I will be providing some more information over the next few weeks as the Summer Institute gets closer. So at this time, all the travel authorizations should have gone out through Quasi. So if anyone does have any questions about their travel or lodging or their stay at University of Alabama, you can contact me at any time. And we can address your question. Yeah, so Emily is the, the go-to person for, all, for everything you need to know that you don't know. So this is a brief summary of the schedule of activities for the Summer Institute. Uh, it's divided into seven weeks. The first week is the, which starts the week of June 6th, and we're anticipating that you're going to travel and arrive here on the Monday, and that's because the university will then be open and people will be here to receive you. Um, there will be a welcome event in the evening. We won't have a activities during the day on Monday, though. The idea is you get your living accommodation set out and moved in and that kind of thing. Um, on Tuesday to Friday, we're going to have an overview of the Summer Institute, and I'll say a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, and the intent there is just to provide a, a conceptual framework for understanding what we're intending to accomplish and also to get to know one another as students and as uh, begin to form the research teams. On the second week, we will have a focus on project development, and the idea is to have specific uh, teaching activities that are associated with uh, particular research themes. This is going to also involve some detailed field work at a couple of locations near Tuscaloosa, uh, where uh, indirect measurement equipment is being installed, radar measurement equipment for water level and stream velocity. Um, that's on Cribs Mill Creek and the uh, Cahaba River at Centerville. 
Um, so some students will be involved in that, and others will be involved in different activities, and the theme leaders will be working with them to say, if you want to work on this, then you need to learn this particular thing and go through that. Um, if the intent is at the end of the second week that the research projects are formulated, uh, the teams are formulated and the goals are present. Uh, you might not have, at that point, all the data that you need, but at least you can articulate the need for the data that you don't have. Uh, then there's four weeks, weeks three through six, uh, just to do the project research from June 20th through July 15th. And then there's, uh, on the final week, uh, week seven, um, there's the capstone event, which will be on the Wednesday, and then you'll leave uh, on campus on Thursday, July 21st. I've put a note underneath here um, that faculty advisors are welcome to visit the National Water Centre at any time to see the centre and to work with their students. Um, and that's any time, I mean any time during the Summer Institute. Uh, Quasi can support travel for one trip by each faculty advisor and you're especially encouraged to visit during the first two weeks during the overview and the research formulation phase of the Summer Institute or during the capstone event. But if those don't fit your schedule and you want to come some other time and work with your students, your advisees, you're very welcome to do that. And we want to involve as many faculty as possible at some point visiting the centre so that simply you get to see this place and see what's going on and start building relationships that can be used for a further development in future years. So you can be suggesting ideas for research, you can be guiding what your student is doing. Hopefully, uh, once the Summer Institute is over, you can be helping them to write a paper about what they've done while they were here. Uh, so we want to build this component of faculty engagement into the National uh, Summer Institute. And we've actually reduced the number of students uh, attending this year from 44 last year to 34 this year to, re to divert resources over into supporting faculty to be able to come as well so that we can build the student-faculty relationship and foster it in the environment of the Summer Institute and not just have the students coming here. So uh, we want everyone to feel as welcome as possible and for this to be the uh, continuing point in a relationship with the National Water Centre and with the Summer Institute that goes on into the future and not just for this year. So the Summer Institute overview is going to happen this way. Um, as I mentioned on Monday, there will be the arrival of check-in and welcome. On Tuesday, there's going to be an introduction to the National Water Centre, and there's a whole group of National Weather Service hydrologists are also going to be here called Development and Operational Hydrologists, or DOES. Uh, also here will be Louis Uccellini, who's the Director of the National Weather Service and other parts of the National Weather Service leadership. So on Tuesday, there's going to be an introduction to the National Water Centre by the leadership, um, and we'll also have in the afternoon the theme leaders introducing their research themes and some of the thinking that's uh, are going into them. Uh, <coughs> on Wednesday, uh, this flood emergency response, we're going to have an exercise in Tuscaloosa uh, that is going to be a, a, a simulation exercise where we're going to use the uh, uh, environment here, the situation room, which is uh, set up for flood emergency response. And it will, we'll have a, an hour by hour exercise that goes through a flood that happened uh, well, the events of a flood that happened here in uh, Christmas time last year, and you'll be working with uh, emergency response personnel that come in from Tuscaloosa City and Tuscaloosa County. They're going to bring their equipment, their fire trucks and so on that come to do rescues here to the National Water Centre, and you'll see how they operate. There'll be emergency response people working with you in teams so that you'll be like in the middle of an event, in the middle of a flood emergency, and saying, okay, now this has happened, what are you going to do? And the intent is how do we translate scientific information into decision making uh, during an actual flood event. And so Rob Robertson, who's the Emergency Management Coordinator for Tuscaloosa County, is going to be uh, the coordinator of that activity. Uh, also going to be speaking is Walter Maddox, who's the Mayor of Tuscaloosa. And he's going to talk about his experience in helping the city to recover from a disastrous tornado that happened here in 2011. Uh, 53 people were killed, including six students from the University of Alabama. And he was the mayor of the city, and he had to try to cope with just a huge disaster that reduced much of his city to just chipwood, and then cut down m many of the major communication systems that they have here. It took out many of the uh, components of the first response system, the, including medical facilities that people just assume is always going to be here. So he's going to talk about his experience in having to cope with this huge community tragedy that happened here. Uh, on Thursday, we're going to have a day devoted to access to the National Water Model data and how to actually focus on a particular area that's of interest to you 
get the geospatial representation of that area and get the observational and simulation data from the National Water Model that pertain to that area. That's where we're going to be using the TESIS application uh, that, is, uh, that Jim was referring to. We're also going to be providing you with a, a terabyte drive with all the data, the geospatial data for the whole country. So as you can say, oh, I just want to work on this area. You don't have to go anywhere to um, get the data. We'll just give you a drive and we'll have the data already stored on it and you can use it with your own uh, computer and keep it with you when you leave the uh, Summer Institute. Um, then on Friday, we're going to have a, a shift from a local scale flood emergency response to a regional scale flood emergency response. And that's going to be, the keynote speaker for that is going to be James Spahn. He's a meteorologist with ABC News in Birmingham, Alabama. He's a legendary figure here in Alabama. He's the trusted interlocutor for weather information for 40 years. And when, when there's a threatening situation come up, people look to James Spahn and he wears braces or something like that, or suspenders. And he, you know, when he puts the suspenders on, apparently that's a serious, that's a serious situation. Anyway, he's going to come here. And uh, I was here last year. And uh, I explained what we were doing with the National Water Model. And uh, one of the emergency response people here from Tuscaloosa County said, oh, well, if you had all that, this is what James Spahn could do. He would be standing up with his suspenders on. He'd have a flood inundation map set out of what he anticipated the flooding would be uh, for this forthcoming event. And he would be explaining what the impact of the event would be to the people who need to understand that uh, for their own safety and well-being. So he's going to be there on Friday. And we're also going to spend a significant amount of time on Friday on working with the teams and having discussion back and forth about how to formulate the research projects and making sure that you've got a good understanding of, um, or at least you, you're beginning to develop a good understanding of, of just what it is that you'll do uh, when you're here and who you're going to work with. Um, then I wanted to uh, just bring up this slide that I've showed in some forms uh, earlier that the National Water Model uh, has a weather component, which uh, comes from the National Weather Service, and it has a hydrology component and a land atmosphere component. Uh, those are largely canned now. They're in the National Water Model. It's operational. Uh, we, don't, we have a very limited opportunity to be able to fix them or change them. The emphasis now is going to be on hydraulics and on inundation and impact, because those are the fields that are really ripe and open for development. The National Water Model is not just a National Hydrology Model, it's also a National Hydraulic Model, because it's, also, it's calculating not just the discharge, but also the velocity. Uh, and from that, we want to be able to do real-time inundation mapping and the impact of um, flooding on communities. And so the green area that I've highlighted here is going to be the area of emphasis uh, for the National Water uh, for the Summer Institute. Uh, we want to start off at the beginning of the Summer Institute on Wednesday, June the 8th, with a flood emergency response for Tuscaloosa County. And our goal, or a goal, besides all the other research goals that you have, is collectively that we could have achieved by Wednesday, July 20th, a real-time flood inundation mapping capability linked to the National Water Model for the state of Alabama. And one of the facts that's important to keep in mind when we do this is that there's a big river basin here called the Mobile Alabama River System. And the big blue rivers that you see here are actually navigable rivers, and they have lock and dam structures on them. So this is not just a free-flowing river. These are locks. They're like, they're like little dams, and they, uh, the water is flat behind them for 40 or 50 miles. So uh, there's a special kind of hydraulics that we have here in Alabama that has to be taken into account. So our goal is to go from a state-level prototype to a, sorry, from a county-level prototype at the beginning of the Summer Institute to a state-level prototype uh, at the end. I want to finish here by um, just summarizing again the uh, theme leaders that are going to be participating with us. Uh, Sagi Cohen from the University of Alabama is going to be working with flood inundation mapping. Uh, Sagi, are you here with us? I think he was not on the call earlier. Uh, Sagi is an expert in remote sensing. So one of the things that Sagi is keen to introduce and introduced last year is the notion of using satellite remote sensing to actually sense from space the size of the extent of inundation of flooding, and he's going to be fostering that. Then there's Sarah Praskovitz, who's working on densified measurement and flow modeling, along with Jonathan Nelson from the US Geological Survey. I think Sarah is measuring something in the forest in Belize right now, and John is in some other place. Um, but we're going to have two field sites here that I mentioned earlier uh, where new instruments for radar measurement of velocity and depth are being installed. 
and Jonathan does detailed flow hydraulic modeling, and we're going to do detailed field work using terrestrial laser scanning and other techniques so that we get a good measure of the resistance of the river. So this is not just about everything at the continental scale. It's also going to be about detailed hydraulics and fluid mechanics at a very localized scale. Uh, Ibrahim Demir from the University of Iowa. Are you on the phone, Ibrahim? Okay, let me just uh, summarize that. So Ibrahim is dealing with data assimilation and forecast error, and especially about how to densify measurements because they've got twice as many points in Iowa that they're measuring water as what the US Geological Survey has, um, where the additional points of measurement, um, primarily for water level, have been installed by the University of Iowa. And so the question is, if you have additional information like that, how can that be used uh, to improve forecast accuracy? Also, they do very detailed river mapping in Iowa for, at the Iowa Flood Center, and Ibrahim is an expert in that field. So there's a lot of intelligence that can be drawn from the experience in Iowa, and uh, that's uh, going to be um, Ibrahim's contribution. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Alphonse Mahir from Penn State University is going to be dealing with uh, regional studies that deal with river basin applications and city applications in uh, Pennsylvania, um, and including the city of Philadelphia. Uh, and he's also done work on data assimilation and common filtering and some other things. So I don't want to make, imply by this mapping here that everybody only just deals with one subject. I think it's going to be sort of a bit of a mix and match sort of a thing here. Um, then I'm going to be the person who will be leading the effort in flood emergency response. And I have with me here sitting next to me at the National Water Center, Laura Myers, from the Center for Advanced Public Safety of the University of Alabama. And they've got a team of about 100 computer scientists who work on, flood emer well, work on emergency response applications. So Laura, why don't you take it away and tell a little bit about CAP? Yeah, we're a software development uh, entity, and we develop software applications for first responders for the public safety community. And in this case, we're going to be working with you guys on taking the, the things that you develop over the summer and integrating that into a situational awareness tool for first responders. We're going to be developing a mobile application where we'll integrate uh, the data and uh, maps and imaging that you have for first responders, and we're going to be working directly with the first responders to find out how that needs to be utilized in a mobile application. So you'll see us throughout the summer, and we'll be working directly with you to make that process happen. Thank you so much. And this, so this really now, everyone wants something on their cell phone, right? So when I said to Laura and her team, uh, can we make an app? She said, well, of course, duh. <laughs> and that didn't seem so simple to me. So I really appreciate your capacity uh, and your, the capacity of your team to be able to bring that kind of knowledge, which is a very specialized kind of knowledge, actually, uh, to this. So the intent is to, you know, to have something that you can hold in your hand and say, OK, I get it. Here's, here's what, how this information is going to be relevant to me. Um, in a handheld device. Um, and finally, there's Albert Van Dyck. He's from the Australian National University. And I'm very pleased to tell you that Australia has started a summer institute. So they have been inspired by um, what we've been doing here. And Albert is leader of something called AussieWex, the Australian Water and Energy Experiment. And they're going to have a weather and climate uh, summer institute at Australian National University in Canberra. And of course, it's their summer, which is uh, six months of place from ours. But, uh, so Albert is going to be here to help us to think about continental water balance as it has been worked on in Australia, because they had a terrible drought over 2000 to 2009. They've got some national water model things that they've been running in Australia that we can learn from, I think. And also, he's wanting to learn from us so that he can see how to organize and run a summer institute uh, in Australia with similar kind of goals to the ones that we have. So that's uh, the uh, program that I had uh, put together for this uh, webinar. Are there any comments that anybody has to make or questions that you have? Sagi, do you want to make any comments? And if anyone is not connected to the phone line, they have a comment or question, just go ahead and type into the chat box.
Okay, is the PDF available after the meeting? Emily? We can make yes. it available if that's okay with you, David. We can post it yeah, to the no Summer Institute yeah, no website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. I'm really looking forward to seeing you all in person here in, uh, in Alabama in, uh, well, less than a month's time now. So it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great time together. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right, thank you so much, David, for putting this together. And uh, we are looking forward to meeting everyone in just a few weeks down in Alabama. So please reach out if you have any outstanding questions. And thank you.